So guys, welcome back. This is Val from Gemlight. In this short video, I'm gonna show you a really cool dash studio lighting trick using emissive lights. Now, normally when you use this type of lighting, you make an object emissive. That is, you make it cast lighting, right? That has a problem. Now, bear in mind, this there is, you know, often several solutions to a, a particular problem. And the, the thing I wanna cover is that light has its own look depending on how bright it is and it also has an additional feature is that it casts lighting at the same time right but very often you need to overpower it quite a bit and i'll make the wall details here cast light right and if i overpower it more so that she receives more lighting let's say double that amount the wall kind of becomes really blurry right and overpowered yeah she receives more light but the wall is now blurry kind of overblown overexposed so how do we do that well like i said there was a lot of solutions to this one is to use an extra light for her and then control the background separately another one is to use ghost lights which are invisible lights and so forth and so forth but today's trick is very very simple and it has an even simpler approach. We are just using the same scene, but we're gonna do two renders. One when she looks good, and one when the wall looks good. And then we're gonna mix them both in Photoshop. Sounds good? All right. So what I wanna do is just smooth out my bloom effect. It's a little bit too much. Frankly, we can maybe tone it down. So it's not that much of it, right? We don't need the bloom to bleed that much in our scene all right so first of all that now looks pretty good on her all right so let's make that a render all right let's render that out and just the way it is right no special treatments or so forth let me just render that out all right i'm gonna pause the video and rendering so that is pretty much enough, right? I just want to have a little bit of samples here as a render to get a little bit smoother look. And I think she looks good enough. So this kind of is the look we want on her, all right? Or now with Lady. So let's go ahead and cancel and save our image. Uh, save that render. And I call it her look. Her look, okay. Her best look, so to speak. And then we're gonna tune down the walls. There's, there's this way of you know, going to the surface and adjusting it. And if you just have a single light or if you just wanna tone down everything, you can also go to tone mapping and say, hey, I wanna have a little bit less stuff happening in my scene. So I lower that until the wall looks better, right? However, that may or may not backfire with your bloom effect. So I'm just gonna, you know, tune, tune it down a little bit uh, to maybe, let's say, half of it, right? There we go. And now we see that the wall looks pretty good. So I'm gonna render that out again. Now, the thing is, you don't need anything else than these two renders, right? Uh, no masks are needed, nothing. You just render one where the subject looks good in this case, our lady, and one when the emissive source or light of emission looks good, all right? And then I'm gonna bring them into Photoshop. And you can argue that this is gonna add to your rendering time, and yeah, it's gonna double your rendering time, but it's gonna, you know, cut down your design time to nothing because you don't need to add any additional lights, you don't need to fine tune them, you don't need to adjust their position, location, intensity, rotation, and whatnot, right? So it's faster that way. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Cool, 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 and save. I wanna call it background. Look, all right, there we go. Now, let's open these up in Photoshop. All right, so I'm gonna load them up in Photoshop, and I'm gonna put the image called her look on top of the other one so i'm going to select that first use ctrl a to select all ctrl c to copy use command on a mac instead then click here and do ctrl v to paste it on top right now i'm going to bring up layers here and I'm going to create a mask 
the layer mask, right? This one here. And pretty much now I'm gonna use black and use a brush. Uh, pretty much, maybe 200 is better, yeah. And you can use opacity 50 or 30 or whatever to kind of, oops, wrong way. Let's see inverted by the way. So I'm gonna alt click on it. I'm gonna enter black and then switch to white. Click here. So I have the background now visible, right? And I wanna paint where I want her to be more visible. So now I'm painting with white on my layer so that she receives more light from the additional layer. How cool is that? See what I'm doing here? So I'm simply mixing her where I want the image to be brighter, right? And you can fine tune this now using a smaller brush, if that goes around here, edges unintentionally, right? And so forth. And that's pretty much it guys. That's how you can, you know, control the emissive lighting inside Dash Studio with a little bit of help of Photoshop. And by the way, you don't have to use it in Photoshop. You can use the free GIMP for this. As long as you have layers and a mask, you can control here. And guys, if you wanna have more stuff, there are links below this video. You can get the free Photo Studio for Dash Studio below. And also there is a $1 seven day trial to our Super 3D Art Quick Start if you wanna master Dash Studio. That's all for now guys, follow the channel, hit like, thanks so much for watching, see you soon again.